Morning, welcome to DTV TV. Uh, this is preview part two for the game against Crystal Palace. Uh, I'm just going to read out a couple of things out today's Liverpool Echo, which is here. And as always, my phone always pings as soon as I go live. Let me just turn that off. Two seconds. We'll get used to that by next season. So, yeah, so this is... The, I like that headline. I know it's not to do with Liverpool, but I totally agree with that. How the people of Liverpool led Britain out of lockdown. Scientists praise City's role in the vaccine trials, and also we were the first to do the army here. So that's really good that the City's getting a bit of credit for helping this country out. So that's really good. Anyway, football. So it says here, Klopp's Jota Hope in today's Echo. And it says here, basically... Diego Jota will be given every chance to help Liverpool in their quest to secure Champions League qualification. Jota was initially expected to be out for the remainder, remainder of the campaign after picking up a foot problem during the 4-2 Premier League win at Manchester United earlier this month. However, Jurgen Klopp revealed ahead of Wednesday's 3-0 triumph at Burnley there were an outside hope that Portugal International could be available for the season finale at home to Palace on Sunday. Jota, who had initially worn a protective boot until scans revealed the damage was not as bad as first feared, has now returned to full training. And speaking to LiverpoolFootballClub.com Hang on, is that coming? Uh, two seconds, my chair. <laughs> Hang on, that's it. Sorry. Uh, and speaking to LiverpoolFootballClub.com on Saturday, Red's boss Klopp said of Jota returning against Palace, I don't know yet. It all looked good and he will probably train today and that was planned yesterday. And when he tra can train, we have a look how he trains and then we make a decision if we can get him involved. Jordan Henderson out since February with a groin problem took part in team training on Friday and could be considered for the bench. So Henderson could be on the bench today and Jota, Jota may be involved. Victory for Liverpool over Palace would almost certainly assure top four Champions League football with the Reds currently ahead of Leicester City on goal difference in fourth and points behind there. But I'm just going to say something. Now, I know we haven't won a trophy this season, but I was listening to Simon Jordan yesterday and he knows all about finances and figures and stuff like that. Hello, Tom, mate. All right, Emma. Uh, 30, £30 million pound today's game's worth. 30 million quid. If Liverpool win today, 30 million pound will go straight into their bank uh, as uh, for qualification to the Champions League. That is only just to qualify. They then can earn up to 100 to 130 million to, if they win it and reach the final. So this game today is basically a 130, 150 million pound football match if we can progress. And we always seem to get to the quarters or the semis. Then you add the fact you've got the gates, gate receipts. This is a huge football match. Now, if we were playing in the FA Cup final today, even though I would still be probably more excited and a trophy was on the line, you get about £2 million for winning the, uh, winning the FA Cup. So, in my opinion, I know top four isn't a trophy, but in terms of commercial value, in terms of signing the best players, and in terms of Klopp being able to attract the best players then this game today is absolutely monumental. It is huge. And based on the fact that, you know, we want to be in the Champions League. And I am so flipping buzzing if we do it. And I'll tell you why. Man United fans have been quiet over the last few weeks, but they were waiting. They were waiting to pounce. They were waiting to go, ha, 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 you're in the Europa League next season. Ha, we're in the Champions League. We've finished 15 points ahead of you. We could finish two points behind them after today if they lose. Two points behind them with a team of 22 different centre-back pairings and the midfielders and, and Jota, Firmino, uh, sorry, Jota, Alisson, Henderson all spending three months minimum out during the season plus two, two crucial or two major out, uh, injuries to our centre-backs and Matip as well losing half a season. So if we finish two points behind Manchester United Qualify for the Champions League. Let's not forget, they haven't had our injury problems. Have Manchester United qualified for the Champions League in the last few years? No. They've been Europa League every season. So I keep saying this. 
Klopp has worked miracles and he deserves I'm going to give him a proper proper reception today when he comes here because I think we need to do our job as supporters today the ones that live around here and the ones that are going to be here today this is their last game of the season we need to applaud them and just say well done I'm going to applaud that's all I'm going to do I'm going to applaud them coming uh, today really am so we're going to put Mr. we're going to put Jurgen Klopp out on the lamppost again because everybody likes having photos with that with 10,000 being back we put the banner at the bottom of the house and uh, the flag out the window like we do anyway, so we'll get on the telly, I should imagine, today. <laughs> we normally do. Anyway, I've just spoke to my mate Bo uh, earlier, and he's got my Nike home shirt this season's, and later on, Graeme Souness and Jamie Carrig will be signing it. Uh, it won't be framed, because I'm only going to charge £5 a number. It's my home shirt that I paid for at the end of the day, but I just think it would be a great gift for somebody to buy. Well, well can you imagine getting a signed Souness Souness. Graham Souness is a rare, rare autograph. I don't see many about, and we were talking about that earlier. I don't see much signed Graham Souness stuff. So today, someone, or today or tomorrow, whenever I do I start taking numbers, I'm going to do what my mate, my mate that, uh, does, which is uh, we're going to uh, take numbers, and then it will be Friday's lottery draw, and whatever number the bonus ball is. Uh, is it bonus ball? Depends how many numbers we do. I need to. That's the idea. I don't know how many numbers I'm going to do yet because uh, you know I'm not going to be I'm not going to be asking for the same amount of money as what somebody would make if it's framed. So it's not going to be a lot at all. But it'd just be nice if you've got a man cave or you've got a woman cave, whatever it is, you know, a, fr a framed shirt with uh, with with, with Sooners and Carragher's autograph on it. I think uh, you know people would appreciate that. Sooners is a Liverpool legend, and so is Jamie Carragher. Think of the trophies that them two have won together, and their autographs, you know, you know, being put on both shirts. So this is the things that DTB TV will now be starting to provide for you, is because because I get on really well with the security there. Then I, you know I'll try and get everything. I'll, I'll try my best without without taking the Mickey. Do you know what I mean? I'll just ask now and again. I won't be there every two minutes because I don't want to get anybody in any shit. Uh, so that's the first thing. Now I've got another announcement to make. The scratch card. How many left? Twelve. Has 12 left, they're a pound each, so we're going to get rid of them, that's not a problem. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it, make this a bit of an announcement here. We charge, normally, apart from last game of the season, which is a pound each, two pound a team and free for a fiver. Now, sometimes we can have three games in a week, and it's a little bit, you know, too, too much to ask people to pay that three times in a week. And sometimes people don't get paid till Friday. So here's my new announcement. From... The start of pre of pre-season, when Liverpool kicked their first ball, every game that is played in midweek will be a pound a go. Saturday games or Sunday games will be two pound a go, free for a fiver, because people get paid on Fridays. So midweek games will now only be one pound a go. I think that's really good. And that's me slashing the, the value of the card by half. So I just think that's a really good commitment from us as a group, just to make sure we're not, you know, we're not, you know, we're not making it all about, you know, these cards and trying to drag five pound a, a time out of people because we don't want to be coming across like that. So from, from the start of pre-season for the 2021-2022 season, the scratch cards on a midweek match will be a pound a team and that's how it's going to be weekend games will be three for a fiver two pound a go so that's that so let me just have a look in the echo see if there's any more stories uh, yeah i just want to read out this one here about uh, liverpool's transfer business which is just here uh, and it says here we'll make our own moves and won't be swayed says Klopp. so it says here Jurgen Klopp is adamant Liverpool's transfer business this summer will not be influenced by moves of their Premier League rivals. The Reds will press ahead with recruitment plans after the campaign concludes on Sunday afternoon at home to Palace. Liverpool have, ass have assessed the new centre-back Ibrahima Konate of Red Bull Leipzig is on a five-strong shortlist. Now we're after five players coming in. That is a new, I didn't know that. Uh, and it says here... Uh, we need midfield reinforcements with the likely departure of Genie Van Alden. Harry Kane's willingness to leave Tottenham has intensified transfer interest. Forthcoming transfer window with Manchester City, Man United and Chelsea said to be interested in the 100 million rated England skipper. But Klopp is refusing to be swayed by moves elsewhere. With Liverpool sporting director Michael Edwards ready to mastermind another busy few months. 
Whatever, whatever we do or do not do in the next transfer window, we won't use it as any kind of excuse, said the Reds boss, when asked about potential transfers involving their rivals. We did what we did in the past the way we did it. When there was money, we spent it. When there was no money, we didn't spend it. And here we are. That is how it is. That's how our football clubs run. There's a moment in pre-season where I hope we have the team together that we will go through. We are working for that. We want to be really uncomfortable opponent. That's the most important thing. We might not be the best team in the world at the start of the season, but we want to be again the team who nobody wants to play against because we are that good. I think that's possible. I really think my responsibility is to improve the team without signings as well, honestly. We have everything we have, experience, we have players in the best stage and we have youth. That is my main focus. The rest we have to see, but whatever other clubs are doing, it will not influence our business. Since winning the Champions League in June 2019, Liverpool have had a net spend of around £10 million in the transfer market. That's unbelievable. Uh, and Klopp admits that while improvement would be welcome, he is content with his current group of players. He always says that, and I love that. He always believes in the group he's got. Could this squad improve? Yes, like each squad could. Is that affordable? I don't know. Is it necessary? I don't know. Whatever happens, we will see. I don't know at, the, at this moment in time, to be honest. We will have to make decisions both in and out, all kinds of things that's normal in the summer. And what I will say about that as well is expect signings in the next 14 days because the Euros is in 20 days, I think 19, 20 days. Klopp will want his players in before the Euros. So... Canate is a French international. So I think that soon as that ball... I said this last week on my videos. For those that watch my videos, I said that our transfer list will be deemed on whether we qualify for this Champions League with the funds being made available based on what we're going to earn with the Champions League. If we win today against Palace... Canate will be the first signing, in my opinion. He will be the first to be green-lighted because it's a minimum fee release clause. That I've already heard that the, the wages and the contract have been agreed. Now, we did the same with Van Dijk. Van Dijk's contract was agreed way before the fee was. But there's no need to agree a fee with Canate because it's minimum fee release. So, he will be the first. And from what it's saying here, four more. Now, I get Basuma from Brighton or Grealish, but... I can't see Grealish happening because he's a British player and the, you know, the transfer market's ridiculous for British players. But anyway, that's part two done. Uh, like I say, from next season, the scratch cards will be a pound a go for midweek matches and two pound a go, three for a fiver for weekend. You'll never walk alone.